Welcome into New York Giants and Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green, and it's overreaction Monday following a victory Sunday against the New Orleans Saints, and it still feels good because this is the first game the New York Giants have won in the 2021 NFL season. And in today's video, I will be giving you my five biggest overreactions that I have been seeing across the Twitter landscape following the big win. First one on the list is Daniel Jones, the answer as the New York Giants franchise quarterback. And I mean, honestly, yesterday, he played like it. This is not an overreaction. When you do the things that Daniel Jones did yesterday in the fourth quarter and in overtime, when the Giants were down 11 points, when the game seemed over, when when Joe Judge punted on fourth down inside of his uh, inside of the opponent's territory. The game fell over, but Daniel Jones, he kept on going at it, and he kept on throwing the ball down the field, and he was extremely effective when doing so. His numbers yesterday, he threw for 402 yards in yesterday's win versus the New Orleans Saints, and that is the most in his NFL career. 28 for 40, two touchdowns, and a quarterback rating of 108. He was also 8 of 11 on throws of 15-plus air yards, totaling for 229 yards and two touchdowns let Danny Dime let him throw the ball down the field Jason Garrett because when that happens good things happen for this offense and the reason the Giants were able to win this game is because of the effort that Daniel Jones was able to put up in the fourth quarter in overtime he was 14 for 19 almost a 74 percent completion percentage 203 yards and he had that touchdown to Saquon Barkley on the go route kind of the jet concept where the slot receiver ran an out route and Daniel Jones stared him down Marshawn Lattimore bit on the out and found Saquon Barkley over the top of the defense. One thing I love about Daniel Jones and this football team is that everybody is all in on Daniel Jones and they all believe in him to get the job done. We'll quickly roll in some post-game quotes following the game. This is what Saquon Barkley had to say about Daniel Jones. Ever since the day he's been drafted, he's been criticized. And that guy does, does nothing but come in and work and get better and lead every single day. He showed he's a special player. We knew he's a special player. Kadarius Toney, he said this about Daniel Jones. Man, that was a great performance by Daniel. Nobody in the locker room doubts him no matter what. Whether he had a bad game or a good game, there is never no doubt because we know at the end of the day, our faith is the strongest belief we have. And that's true. Everybody on this team, they believe in Daniel Jones. He has earned the trust of this roster. Joe Judge, he also sung the praises of Daniel Jones in the post-game press conference, which was a good thing to hear because Dan because Joe Judge, he rarely does that. But when Daniel Jones plays like this, it's not a real overreaction to say, I believe in DJ and I think he's going to be our franchise QB for the coming years to come. But I have a question for you guys. Get in the comment section. Be active for me. Is Daniel Jones the Giants franchise quarterback? If you do think he is, go down in the comments and type, go DJ. And if you think he's not going to be able to do it in the Giants, they're going to have to be scouting for another quarterback come draft time. Go down in the comments and type, no DJ. Overreaction number two that I'm seeing everyone talk about. Andrew Thomas was worth the number four pick in the 2020 NFL draft. If you would ask me this question last year after the sample size that he put up in his rookie season, I would say no, he didn't. He didn't earn that pick. But what he's put on display so far through the 2021 NFL season, he has been absolutely great. He's allowed just six pressures, one QB hit, zero sacks, and he has a PFF pass blocking grade of 79.0, which ranks him as a top 10 tackle in the NFL. This guy is playing much better than he was as a rookie, and it is showing on top of that. Yesterday against the Saints, he went up against some great pass rushers in Cam Jordan, and they were blitzing, and there was a lot of zero blitz situations, and he stood tall, and he protected the blind side of Daniel Jones. PFF graded him out as an overall grade of 79.9, a run block grade of 69.5, an area I still want to see Andrew Thomas get better at, but baby steps, because last year, he wasn't it. He allowed 10 sacks in penalty after penalty in a pass block grade of 86.0 yesterday is an absolute thing to celebrate if you're a New York Giants fan because Andrew Thomas, he's going to be the left tackle of the future and this is someone that you can count on and to protect Daniel Jones. I love it. I love what I'm seeing from Andrew Thomas. Guys, last week we had our largest subscriber growth in channel history. Last week gained almost over 400 subs. We crossed over the 2,000 milestone, and that's because of you guys, and I want to thank you. Quick round of applause. Thank you to everybody that has subscribed to New York Giants now. 
Without you guys, none of this is possible. And the way things work at Brown Chat Sports is, the more subscribers you have, the more studio time and videos you get to put out. And I want to continue to do that. So let's get to 2.5 thousand subs by game day against the Dallas Cowboys. If you didn't know, they have over 100,000 subscribers here at Chat Sports. We're not going to catch up to them, but we can beat them on Sunday. And I think we will if we get to 2.5 thousand subs. So go down and hit that big red button. Overreaction number three. The Giants can make the playoffs. Guys, relax. Let's celebrate the win because we earned it. After an 0-3 start, the season almost seemed over. There's only been one team since 2009, that's the 2018 Texans, that have started 0-3 and made the playoffs. Simple as I can say it, this is an overreaction. I don't want to... I don't want to be that guy, but guys, let's slow it down. We're 1-3. We're playing in a division with a great Dallas Cowboys team that looks really good. I hate to say it, but we have our chance next week to end up 2-3 two and three and beat the Dallas Cowboys. The Giants, they should be 2-2. Two and two. That game against Washington was winnable. We beat them and played better than them for all four quarters, but we didn't finish. That's, the, that's what this team was about the first three weeks, finding ways to to lose but what did the Giants do yesterday they found a way to win and that's what good teams do we could be three and one there's no doubt about that we should we should be two and two no doubt about that but we could be three and one but we're one and three you're only as good as your record says so right now let's slow down let's not worry about the playoffs because the schedule that's coming up is extremely extremely tough we're going to have to travel to Arlington this weekend to play the Dallas Cowboys. They looked great yesterday against the Carolina Panthers, beating an unbeaten team and giving them their first loss on the season. The Los Angeles Rams, they're another really good team. Matt Stafford and Sean McVay, they had that offense humming, and that's going to be a tough test for this New York Giants defense. Then week seven, you've got to play the Carolina Panthers, a team that showed some holes against the Dallas Cowboys yesterday, and I think that's now a winnable game for this Giants team, but it's going to be tough, and you're going to have to bring your A game. Week eight, you play the Kansas City Chiefs. Don't look at the record. They are still one of the best teams in the NFL, and they have the best quarterback in the NFL in Patrick Mahomes. And anytime you play him, it's going to be tough. The Giants... They have, are going to have their hands full with that Kansas City offense. Then week nine, you're going to play the Las Vegas Raiders. Derek Carr, John Gruden, they look really good. That team is playing as a cohesive unit, and they're playing really well on the defensive side of the ball, really playing good complementary football. That's another tough game. Then you have a bye week in week 10, and then week 11 against the Tampa Bay Bucks and Tom Brady. Last year, you took that Bucks team and Tom Brady to the wire. Daniel Jones, he led a, a drive at the end of the game where he, taught, he, was, he brought the Giants down two points, but then he airmailed the two-point conversion that would have sent the game into overtime. But I do have hope for that game because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' defensive backroom is absolutely terrible. Richard Sherman looked awful last night. He looked really slow. The schedule is tough, and I'm not ready to say the Giants are going to make the playoffs. I really don't have much hope of that, but the season is not over yet. There's stuff to celebrate. But let me know what you guys think. Go in the comments and let me know. Will the Giants make the playoffs? If you think they will, Go down and type your Y for yes, or if you think like me, they still have some games to win and areas to improve on, go down and type your N for no. Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay, overreaction number four. They are the real deal. Yesterday, they played like it. They looked like two of the playmakers that the Giants missed the past couple seasons, and that's why they added them in the offseason. Galladay, he had his best game as a Giant, and so did Kadarius Tony. They were clearly a part of the game plan, and they attacked the rookie corner on the Saints. I mean, when you look at their stats yesterday against the New Orleans Saints, they pop off the page. Seven targets for Galladay, six receptions. Daniel Jones, he has been really effective when he's been targeting Galladay, and that continued into yesterday's game. He finally crossed over the 100-yard mark, totaling 116 yards and 19.3 yards per catch for Galladay. That's what we, what we want to see. In history, and, and what he's used to is being a 20 yards per catch guy, and he got back to that yesterday. Three grabs of over 20 yards and a long of 28. Kadarius Toney, he had nine targets. Awesome to see. They finally are starting to work Kadarius Toney into this offense, and he deserves it. He is lightning in a bottle whenever he gets the ball, and he puts pressure on the defense to tackle, something that a lot of NFL teams are struggling with here. This year is tackling, so get Kadarius Tony the ball because he makes good things happen. Six catches, 78 yards, a 13.0 average per catch, and a long of 21. On that third and 19 
They threw a little swing pass, a screen pass to Kadarius Toney, and he made five guys miss, and he got the first down. An absolute amazing play from the rookie pass catcher. But when and if Sterling Shepard comes back, and if he can be the same guy he was before that hamstring injury, this wide receiver group can be really, really special. Those three playmakers are tough for any defense. And then when you mix in a guy like John Ross, he, he went through his first action yesterday against the Saints wearing that New York Giants blue, and he was an immediate impact player. Caught the long touchdown from Daniel Jones, and oftentimes when he was in the game, the Saints were forced to play too high because they didn't want to get beat by John Ross on a deep route. John Ross had a quote after the game, actually this morning following the game, and said he could hear defensive backs saying back up when he got in the game. He has that speed that makes you game plan for it, and this wide receiver group can be dominant if they continue, if they get healthy coming in to this week against the Dallas Cowboys. Overreaction number five, last one on the list, the Giants' pass rush is awful, and it absolutely is. Last year, somehow, this group was better with far less talent. This year, it has just been a disaster. Yesterday, the Giants, zero QB hits and zero sacks. That is just unacceptable when you play a team like the New Orleans Saints. You need to put pressure on a guy like Jameis Winston. When people on the internet this morning were saying that the Giants' pass rush was bad, I have to agree, and I had to put it on the show because it is spot on. That's not an overreaction. Once again, zero QB hits and zero sacks. When you leave a game like that, that is just unacceptable, and Patrick Graham has to be better. If he has to find ways to scheme pressure instead of just – because these guys, they're not going to win one-on-one. -on -one. The only one-on-one -on -one pass rusher that this Giants' defense has – is Leonard Williams. He's the only guy that's really going to be able to win consistently in one-on-one -on -one pass block situations. Aziz Ojolari, he played really great in the first three games. Three games, three sacks. He didn't keep that going this week, but he did have a solid game, even though he didn't get any pressure and he, didn't any force, any, and he did not force any QB hits. These Giants pass rushers, they need to show up and be much better than they have been so far in the NFL season and much better than they were yesterday against the Saints. Leonard Williams, just two pressures. Dexter Lawrence, just one. And Aziz Ojolari, just two. Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimenez, they continue to be ghosts when it comes to getting pressure on the quarterback. And the Giants, they cannot count on these guys. And they need to. If this team wants to compete in the NFC East, the Giants, they need to be much better when it comes to putting, pass, putting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. And it starts with these five guys on the screen. Be the judge, guys. Be the judge. Let me know how worried are you about the New York Giants pass rush. If you're extremely worried, go down and type your 10, meaning this is one of the worst groups in the NFL and they have to get better. Or if you're not worried about it, go down and type your zero because you're not worried and Leonard William and Aziz Ojulari will, will continue to carry the stick and get this New York Giants pass rush back to what it should be. These were my five overreactions from yesterday's game. Daniel Jones, he is the answer. That is not an overreaction. Andrew Thomas, he was worth the fourth pick in the 2021, 2020 NFL draft, and he is proving it this year, playing like one of the best tackles in the NFL. The Giants, can they make the playoffs? Maybe, but right now, that's an overreaction. Just enjoy the big win, the overtime, the walk-off win yesterday against the New Orleans Saints. Tony and Galladay, they, the, they are the real deal. That's not an overreaction. And this pass rush being awful is an overreaction. Guys, we will be back very soon with a preview of this week's game against the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. But until then, go down and hit that big red button to stay up to date on the latest New York Giants news and rumors.